first of all, I'm delighted and I'm happy to be here. I'm happy, I'm happy to be here with human being with a real heart and with a real mind. Human being who are concerned of the suffering of human being wherever they are. And I'm really delighted, I'm learning a lot of lessons, especially from the American activists. For the American who are here, we really thank you from the bottom of our heart for your concern, your dedications, and for you to remember people who are very far away from your home here. This is great, it adds to humanity, it adds to us all, and in the SPLM, we usually, when we are happy, we say we ye. We ye means, we ye means long live. When we say the American we ye, the American we ye, American we ye. This is really uh, great uh, to be here and to see Sudanese and American alive. I was actually, when I came here, I was in Harvard University, and I was with Sudanese activists from the north and the south. Among them is Dr. Luca Bium, who is here today, and Omar Ismail, and many others, and also friends and American activists. And what we discuss at that place is very important to this gathering. It adds value and it will take us ahead because what we discuss there, that we should have a partnership, a strong partnership of advocacy between the American and the Sudanese. And it should not only be there at the top, it should be at the bottom. We should move, we should bring all Sudanese, all the all American who are interested all over the United States to write, to talk to the Congress men and women, to the Senate, to write to them about the situation in Sudan. That there is a need for a new approach, there is a need for a new policy that can save lives in Sudan. Bashir is buying time. We have been in this situation in Darfur for the last 10 years, in the Nuba Mountain and Blue Nile for the last 10 months, and nothing is happening. It is great to be here. It is great to, rem to remind ourselves and the world in general that we have to do something. But again, we should organize ourselves. We should make a strong network and that network should be effective in all over the United States, in Europe, and we are really great for those who stand by the Sudanese people for more than 10 years in Darfur, and again in the Nuba Mountain, in Blue Nile, and everywhere in Sudan, with Manasir in northern uh, Sudan, with the Bija in eastern Sudan, with the workers, the students, women, all over Sudan, from all religions, whether they are Muslims or Christian, whether they are from African origin, Arab origin, they are from all Sudanese origin. That's what we need, and that we are, that is the Sudan we are aspiring for. That is the Sudan we are working for. I'm really glad to be here among you, and I would like to say to those who are new to us, and they are new to our cause and case, that Sudan is an old country. It's a country of 8,000 years. It's, it's a country that is part of the Nile Valley civilization. When the famous African scholar, Sheikh Hatta Diouf, went to Paris, and he had his PhD on the origin of the Egyptian civilization as a black civilization. And he was meant the whole area that uh, from Mali to Senegal, to Ethiopia, to Sudan, to Uganda, to Kenya, this area is the land where the first human being that look for one God. It is in our country, it is in the Barkal uh, Mount, 
mountain. It is the Sudanese that they were part of the of the in, of the of the human being. Great civilization. We have built great civilization in our country. So our country goes to 8,000 years ago. In this 8,000 years ago, our country changed identity, but never changed humanity. And that. understood by those who came and ruled Sudan. There is a historical diversity in Sudan in this 8,000 8, years. Then again, before the independence of South Sudan, our country was having more than 570 ethnic group, tribe, 570. Sudan is a little Africa. It represents Africa. The problem in Sudan and the problem of Africa different religions they can coexist together, how different ethnic groups can coexist together, how we can build on this diversity. The mismanagement of diversity in Sudan is what led to the situation in Darfur, in South Kordofan, Nuba Mountain, and in Blue Nile, because those who rule Sudan, they fell short of understanding the diversity of Sudan. They were saying one thing, Sudan is an Arab and Islamic country. Sudan is more than that. And these short parameters is what led to the war, to the misery, to the genocide. Now, as we are standing here, there is a serious situation that Bashir is taking half a million Sudanese in the Nuba Mountain, in Blue Nile, as hostages. He's hijacking them, he's denying them food, he's denying access for the humanitarian aid. The United Nations is here, nothing has been done for 10 months. Not only that, he's systematically killing them, bombarding them from air, and this is happening in front of the eyes of the whole humanity and the international community. People are being killed, massacred every day. They were telling us to sign an agreement between us and the United Nations, the African Union, the Arab League, in the SPLM. We signed that agreement. It has been now three months. And Bashir, every time they ask him, he's giving them new question. When they answer the question, he changed the question with another new question to them, and nothing is happening. Now, right now, as we are speaking, there are a lot of events in Sudan, and the humanitarian situation is taking the back seat. We need to bring it into the front seat. That's what we want to do. We should do it together to bring the concern, the attention. We should focus the attention of the international community into the situation. The crisis that is happening right now, people who are being killed, rainy season are coming, and no food is going to those people, and instead they are being killed by the ground, by air, with Bashir. And this is not the first time that has happened. I remember very well, I was signing an agreement with Cameron uh, Fagan in Switzerland with the Popular Congress in 2001, I believe, and then Commander Yusuf Kuomaki. Let Yusuf Kuomaki is one of our heroes, one of our leaders, a great friend of many of us. Yusuf Kuomaki was being treated from cancer in the UK. He did call me and he was the commander of the Nuba Mountain by then. And he said, you should come to London to see me. And I told him, by then, I don't have visa, I don't have money. He said, you have to come because the doctor told me in a very short time, I'm going to the bar and I'm, I, I'm not going to see you again. You have to come and see me in London. I went to London and then the foreign, the foreign office in London, they asked us to come and to discuss some issues and to give them briefing. When we went to the foreign office, I told uh, Kamarat Fagan that we need to call Commander Isu Kuomaki to come to that meeting. He said he's very sick, we should not call him. I said no, we should treat him 
as if nothing is going on with his health and let him decide we i called his Kumaki, he said i will come to the foreign office when we went to the foreign office we were met by the desk of sudan and the and 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 the one who is in charge and who made us right now is the ambassador of britain to south sudan and lester mcville lester mcville asked you to go back uh yusuf i thought you should give attention to your treatment you should not come to the foreign office at this time this said look lister the noob are dying food is not going there I need you to take food. I need you to put pressure on Bashir. This is the same Bashir. That happened 11 years ago. Then, then it is the same situation. It is the same policy of genocide. It is the same policy of crime against humanity. It is the same Bashir which is doing the same. And is actually, it is the same Ahmad Harun. Ahmad Harun actually started training himself on genocide on Nuba Mountain. It is not in Darfur. Later on, he moved to Darfur and he came back again to, 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 to Nuba Mountain again. So I'm appealing to all of you, we should double our effort and we should leave no stone and ten and we should go everywhere and take our message. You are here. This is a message of hope. You are making difference. You are adding. I personally, I followed your activities and what you have been doing here. Your message, do not see it, is in New York. It will reach up to the field and it will reach up to the rural areas of Blue Nile and Nuba Mountain. People there also have access to media despite the difficulties. And they will know that there are some people somewhere in the world, in New York, they are concerned, they are attached to what is happening there. Again, I would like, I would like to bring your attention that uh, when General Bashir, especially these days, is, is engaged in a lot of rhetoric, and when he's de describing Southern Sudanese as an insect, and when he is dehumanizing Southern Sudanese and he's saying that they are slaves and that you should not buy slaves unless you have a stick in front of the eyes of the international community of the Sudanese people. In the first place, this is a recipe for genocide. This language, it will lead eventually to genocide in Northern Sudan and in also in other places and with South Sudan. Because genocide is start by dehumanizing others and putting such a language and that will lead to action. General Bashir actually after the secession of the South, he started the war in the Nuba Mountain and Blue Nile by talking that there is no diversity in Sudan and that Sudan is an Islamic Arab state that those who want that they should abide with this fact or otherwise they should leave and look for another country that what led eventually to the war in Nuba Mountain and Blue Nile what he's saying today it will lead to a genocide and, and it need to be stopped and what I'm seeing from the outside world I'm seeing a policy of abysmal to General Bashir and this policy of abysmal is what created Hitler, is what created Adolf Hitler in a different context. Because Bashir now is misreading what is coming from New York, from other places. Bashir is misreading and misjudging the situation. He believes that now he is in a honeymoon with the international community. And that will encourage him to do more. This need to be stopped. We need to do what we can. We need to double our effort. And I'm sure we will reach freedom, we reach justice. Sudan need a holistic approach. Does not need a peacemeal solution. A peacemeal solution, Bashir signed more than 43 agreement. It is on all of them partially or totally. The problem 
is not in Zinuba Mountain, it's not in Darfur, it's not anywhere, it is not in Eastern Sudan, it is not in Gezira. The problem is in the system in Khartoum. Without changing the system in Khartoum, you cannot stop genocide, you cannot do anything. It is only by changing the system in Khartoum that what we should do, a piecemeal solution, will not take us anywhere. And what is happening is not only in the rural areas, it is not in the Nuba Mountain alone, it is not in Darfur alone. Bashir does not know Muslim or Christian. In Darfur, he killed the Darfurians, they are Muslims. On the 21st of, of March, he bent down, he bent down the Evangelical Church in the heart of Khartoum. He bent down the Evangelical Church in the heart of Khartoum because he's using racism, he's using religious hatred. We Sudanese, Muslim and Christian, we should all stand and fight Bashir together and change him. Not, 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 he's not against Christian nor Muslim, he's against everybody. In Khartoum, when he burned the evangelical church, it is not, we should not buy from those people who are telling us it is a group that are fanatic. Those are not fanatic groups, those are group being sponsored, supervised by Bashir, by the security, by the police. The police they were there in a grave in Khartoum when the church was burned down. They were just witnessing, seeing the church being looted. And I asked my fellow countrymen, I asked in particular the Muslim to stand by the Christian of Sudan and to defend their right. This is the right thing to do to, for in order for us to keep the social fabric of our country. We should stand. The Muslims, they should be in the forefront against what is being taking place to the Christian. Today it is Christian, tomorrow is Muslim. And Bashir, he is doing that also to send a message to fool some people somewhere, to call their bluff, that if you do not, I'm the devil, you know. It is better you should not go to the devil, which you do not know. Those, there, is, there are some people who are more fanatic than me. Those people are being sponsored, Muhammad Abdel Karim, Abdel Hay Yusuf, are being sponsored by Bashir security. And they are doing that with an instruction from the security. So we have to stand, all of us, I would like to tell you, I believe and I'm optimistic, the Sudanese people, they will overthrow Bashir. They overthrow two dictatorships in 1964 and in 1985. We should support the women, use the student. We shall support those who are suffering in the rural areas of Sudan, in the marginalized areas, we should stick together, the, we should work together, and we would like all to expose all policies that help Bashir to stay in power in Sudan. And it is really, it is really astonishing that people can deal with Bashir and he is wanted by the ICC, but they cannot deal with the Sudan Revolutionary Front, which is representing the victims. You don't want to deal with, the, with those who represent the victims, and you deal with Bashir, who, who is wanted by the ICC. So we should work together. Tomorrow is for the Sudanese people. Sudan will be a beautiful country, and we will work to unite our country again, a unity between two independent states, in the south and in the north, and we will work, and we are committed to work for the unity of Africa, the unity of the whole uh, humanity. That is our line, that is our thinking, that is our vision, that is our uh, value. The humanity is one, and we should remain one, and thank you so much.